In a previous video in this lecture series, we talked about how exponential functions are one-to-one, -one, and therefore we can use the injectivity of the function, that is the fact it's one-to-one, -to, -one, to solve equations. If ever you had an equation of the form AB equals AC, you could cancel out the bases and get BC because the function's one-to-one. -one. This is also true for logarithms. Logarithms, likewise, are one-to-one -one functions. When you look at a graph of a logarithm like this, it passes the horizontal line test. It's one to one. So whenever you have an expression, an equation of the form log of b is log uh, log of b equals log of c, having the same base a, you can cancel out the logs and just get b equals c. All right. So that's going to be a very useful thing in solving logarithmic equations. That's one of the things you can use a lot. Another, another thing you have to do when you're solving logarithmic equations, if you have an equation in a logarithmic form, you can switch it over to its exponential form and solve it. Or you can go the other way around if that's, if that's at all useful to you. So look at this first example, example A right here. I have log base 3 of 4x minus 7 equals 2. If I wanted to solve for x, what I could first do is get rid of the log and I have to apply the inverse function. So that means moving the log base 3 to the other side. But whenever you move the number to the other side, you have to switch the operation. So if you have log base 3 on the left, it has to switch to its inverse function, which is going to be the exponential base 3. So you get, you get 3 squared, which is equal to 9. And then after that, moving things to the other side is what we're quite used to, right? Um, we want to move the 7 to the other side. How do we move 7 to the other side? Well, you're going to add 7 to both sides. So you get four, or 9 plus 7, which is equal to 16. Now you want to move the 4 to the other side. Well, how do you do that? You, you stick it with a 4, but you have to switch the inverse operation. You get x equals 16 over 4, uh, which is equal to, of course, 4. Now, whenever you're working with logarithmic equations, you have to be cautious. Their domains are restricted. Not all real numbers can be plugged into a logarithm. So you have to make sure this number fits inside the domain. And if you stick it in right here, you get 4 times 4, which is 16 minus 7, which is 9. That's inside the domain. Uh, and then log base 3 of 9 is, in fact, equal to 2. The, the, the second power of 3 gives you, uh, gives you 9. So that gives us uh, that we checked our solution. We're good to go there. Uh, let's look at another equation here. So unlike the first example where we had a logarithmic equation where the variable was in the operand here, you'll notice here that now the variable is in the base. We don't know what the base is right here. That's okay. We still, it's kind of like if you had the equation, you know, like 2 over x is equal to 5 or something like that. Well, the first thing to do is just times both sides by x, right? Why are we times both sides by x? We're trying to move the x to the other side of the equation by clearing the denominators. We're going to do the same thing here that we move the x to the side, you know, how do we how do we clear the proverbial denominator in this situation? Well, you still switch it from logarithmic form to exponential form, in which case we get that 64 is equal to x squared. The base is x here. Now we have a polynomial equation, 64 equals x squared. We want to move the 2 to the other side, right? But as this is the power of 2, we move it to the other side by taking the square root. We get the square root of 64 plus or minus, for which we then get plus or minus 8 as our solutions right here. Now, I have to warn you that kind of like the previous, the previous question here, there are some domain issues, right? What are acceptable values of x? As this is the base of a logarithm, x must be positive and not equal to 1. Those are our stipulations. So if you actually forgot the negative 8 as a solution, good at you. You got it right for the wrong reason, which is better than getting it wrong, right? But, you know, still we want to make sure we don't make this mistake in the future. So eight is the only acceptable base for this problem right here. So notice that what, you know, eight, uh, what power of eight gives you 64, the second power. So this is in fact a solution to that equation. All right, let's look at another one here. Let's take the logarithmic equation two times log base five of X is equal to log base five of nine. Notice that both sides of the equation are log base five, that's good. This is now an example where I'm going to use the one-to-one -one property of logarithms here. Notice that I have log base 5 of A, and this equals log base 5 of B. I can cancel out the logs, and we actually get that A equals B. So that's what we want to do here. How, the right-hand side is already a logarithm. That's great. But what about the left-hand side? It's two times a logarithm. That doesn't quite apply. But we can actually move the two inside of the logarithm by the third law of logarithms. This then gives us the log base 5 of x squared, is equal to log base 5 of 9, for which then we can use the one-to-one -one property to cancel out the logs. We get x squared equals 9, 
for which then if we take the square root again, we'll get x equals plus or minus three. Again, domain issues though, because logarithms have some restrictions on the domains, you need to put them back into the original equation and see what happens. If I take x equals three, uh, you'll get two times the log base five of three, which is, is that equal to log base five of nine? Um, in fact is, that one's perfectly fine. Uh, when you put the negative three in though, you see a problem, you get two times the log base five of negative three. Does that equal uh, log base five of nine? The issue over here is there's a domain issue, right? You can't stick a negative number inside of the logarithm. Log of negative three for any base is undefined. So this is actually, because it's domain restriction, that's undefined. So that's not a solution. Um, and so therefore there's only one solution here, x equals three. Make sure you check your solutions so that uh, it, everything's good in the end. Now let's look at another example. I really like this one. Here, we have two logarithms on the left-hand side. So we have the log base four of x plus three plus log base four of two minus x, that's equal to one. How can we solve this equation? Well, like we did on the last example, if we condense the logarithms into a single log, that'll actually make it work for us. Notice we have a log plus a log. So by the first law of logarithms, we get that this is equal to log base four of x plus three times two minus x, like so, and this is equal to one. And so once we condense the logarithm, then we can switch it to exponential form. We can move the log base four to the right-hand side, and we get x plus three times two minus x is equal to four to the first, which is equal to four. Sometimes people just make magically make the log disappear, which you don't get x plus three times two minus x equal to one. That's actually the mistake. And you see, it needs to be four to the first, which is equal to four, uh, like I said right there. Um, so we can solve this by switching to exponential form. I also want to mention that you could also write the right-hand side as a logarithm, uh, because if you have a one right there, that can be written as log base four of four, right? Uh, notice four to the, what power four gives you four, the first power. You can then cancel the logs and get the exact same thing we had here. X plus three times X minus two is equal to four. Either of those approaches is perfectly fine. And so now we have a quadratic equation. We're gonna foil out the left-hand side. We get two X minus X squared plus six minus three X is equal to four. Combining like terms, I'm just gonna move everything, everything, everything to the right-hand side. Uh, that's gonna give us zero is equal to X squared. Uh, notice you have a two X minus three X. That's a negative X. When I move to the other side, it becomes a positive X. And then when you move the six to the other side, you get four minus six, which is a negative two. Uh, we didn't have to solve this equation. It's a quadratic, so I'll probably factor it or use the quadratic formula, which factoring works out really nice here. You get x plus two times x minus one. And so that suggests to me that x should equal uh, negative two or one. But we should check our solutions. Do they make sense? Now, just because we have a negative number does not mean it's actually ruled out as a possibility. Um, if you plug it into the original equation, right? If we consider negative two for a moment, this would actually give you negative two plus three, which is a positive one. And this will give you two minus negative two, which is equal to four. There's no domain issues there. Log of log of zero, log base four of zero is gonna give you, excuse me, log base four of one is gonna give you zero. And log base four of four is gonna give you one. One plus zero is one, that actually checks out. So negative two passed the test. Just because one works doesn't mean the other one won't work. Um, and just because one's negative doesn't mean it won't work either. So if we try one, you're going to get one plus three, which is four, and you're gonna get two minus one, which is one. So you get log base four of four, which is one, plus log base four of one, which is zero. One plus zero is one again. So actually both of these solutions work out in this example here. So we see that when we check the domains, both of them, since they worked out, X could equal negative two or X could equal one.